What's going on, Force of Will players? Ryan Miles here from On Tilt Gaming, here with episode number 9 of our Force of Will daily series. Um, today we're going to be brewing a deck together. I've been very, very inspired by the recent uh, spoilers that have come out, in particular by Adarachia, City of Verdant Green. Um, so we're going to build a Lumia deck, and just I'm going to talk through all these cards that I've just been thinking about all day. I'm going to talk about what you know we have to worry about in the upcoming meta, that kind of stuff. Um, so let's get right into it. For those of you who are listening, Adarachia, City of Verdant Green is a two mana addition it costs red and green will and you can tap it to produce red or green will um, and then whatever uh, if you play a resonator with that mana then you that resonator gets swiftness so this is really really cool in lumia because if you play a resonator and then it has swiftness it can attack and because it's attacked that means it's rested and then you can flick it with lumia and let you you know use its enter ability again so because it's red and green, um, Lumia's Energize, which is historically almost useless, um, is red and white. So you can actually use your red mana and like call a stone turn one. So you have green and red, immediately play this addition, tap it, and then you know play a Sacred Elf or a Divine Bird or a Tama, which is like super, super cool. So like the opponent goes turn one, do whatever. You go turn one, addition, tap, Divine Bird, attack you, flicker, draw a card. Turn two, um, you have two stones in this edition, play Rachel, attack you with Rachel, you know, you just get, like, there are very, very powerful enter abilities in green, specifically, that I think can abuse this card very, very well. So that's kind of what we're going for, what we're looking at, just want to abuse that card and play this red, green, black mid-range deck, okay? So what do we think the meta is going to look like? How is that going to affect our numbers? Well, let's assume um, that Shahrazad is going to get uh, hit in some capacity. I don't care if it's the ruler. I don't care if it's Ava plus Ruin stories. Let's just assume that Shahrazad's out of the picture. Um, and for the Sacred Elf versus True Blade thing, we're going to assume that True Blade's not banned, and we're just going to not play Sacred Elf because of it. Um, basically, the difference is, is True Blade still legal? Okay, then we play Sacred Elf, or we don't play Sacred Elf, or did they maybe listen to my beautiful, beautiful ideas in my previous vlogs, and they decided to ban Sacred Elf and True Blade at the same time? We'll just assume either scenario happens, we're not playing Sacred Elf, okay? We'll just assume that Sacred Elf is an unplayable card, either through the existence of True Blade or through the banning of Sacred Elf. Um, so no Shahrazad, True Blade still exists, Lorite still exists, um, you know, that's pretty much it, just no Shahrazad. So we don't need to really play four fire spell, is kind of what I'm getting at. Um, which means, if we do think that Shahrazad is gone, then we're worried about Kyrick, right? Because Kyrick just got ground in Air Supremacy, they're trying to play a PLE Alien turn one, um, and another thing to like think about when we're deck building here, is because we think Kyrick is going to be extremely popular and extremely powerful, we're worried about... Um, Firebird, potentially, um, but more specifically the Pathby part. Firebird is a one-mana sorcery speed card that deals 400 damage, or you can awaken it, and it deals 600 damage unchaseable to a Resonator, I believe. And then the Pathby part is a blue-red modal spell. It is quick cast for two mana, but if your ruler is Kyrick or Shayla, it costs one less colored mana, respectively, um, and it deals 600 damage. So because Kyrick has access to, a, to multiple potential deal 600 damage, cards for one mana, um, we're not going to play Melfi for that reason either. So we're going to rely entirely on the Adarachia City of Verdant Green to do our ramping, and it just seems powerful enough on its own, right? Like, being able to ramp and give a Resonator Swiftness, we don't need to over-ramp, we're curving out at like 3-4 with Rachel and then Blazer, um, so that just seems fine. Uh, so Kyrick's the deck to beat, and we'll get into some cool texts that maybe help us with that later, because red, green, black is what we're going for here, um, to get some very powerful proactive plays, but we are pretty slow, so we're gonna need some reactive tools, and that's gonna be the spice at the end, right? Um, so Adaractius at Everdant Green, really cool, really good on the, on the draw when you have Energize, because you can do some cool things on turn one, um, but it's just incredibly powerful with Rachel, because you can attack with her immediately, and also Blazer, the legendary thief, you know, you can play Blazer, you can look at your, you can and look at your opponent's hand and get rid of whatever card you want, attack with Blazer, and then just do it again. Um, and I think that's super good. Um, and I'm kind of leaning towards uh, End of Days and Command of Life and Death Reanimator because I think that uh, Rachel is a very powerful card to, you know, just like get the stuff you need. Um, and then Blazer just prevents, uh, lo like, Blazer is very, very good against Lorite, which we're kind of weak to if we want to play End of Days. Um, obviously, if we use End of Days and then bring back, bring back a Blazer, um, then we get to look at their hand, remove the Lorite from their hand, and at the end of the turn, when the end of days trigger happens, and we get to remove our Blazer from the game to put it back into the field, they no longer have a Lorite to stop that, we get to take another card. So that's pretty cool. 
Um, because we're playing Command of Life and Death, and because we're playing End of Days, and we assume that Shahrazad is no longer a deck, so they don't have access to Evil Elemental Uprising, or decks don't have access to Evil Elemental Uprising at all times, like, Evil Elemental Uprising is very, very vulnerable to discard effects like Blazer, I think it's safe to say that we can play some number of Planting Beans, you know? We can put our Rachel or our Blazer into the graveyard so that we can use cheaper abilities to get them out of our graveyard. Obviously, the reanimating aspect of it is a little bit um, unsynergistic with Adaractia, City of Verdant Green, uh, so we're not going to go full planting means like we're not playing four right we're just going to play a high number of reanimate spells because we want to draw into our resonators play them and attack with them and then if they die we don't want that to be a problem right so if our rachel let's say our kirik opponent has out you know a ple -E, and we want to cast rachel and attack with it maybe we don't attack with it but maybe we want to use it as a blocker right so we play our rachel they want to swing in our face for nine we're like okay block with rachel well now we can just search a command of life and death we can use command of life and death to get back our rachel um and then still have more mana to play with and stuff like that um and i do think that if we are going to go for this kind of reanimator strategy it's actually super super useful for us to use rachel's ability on our own deck so that's kind of cool where we get a look at the top three cards, decide, hmm, I really need to draw a Resonator to play with my Ataractia here, or hmm, I need to put these Resonators in the graveyard because I have um, Reanimator tools in my hand. Um, so Rachel's actually very, like, going to be able to use the first ability a lot more proactively on our own deck if we're playing a high number of Reanimate spells. Um, so another cool card that I think um, fits into the strategy pretty well is going to be the Welser, the Archmage of Fire, which is another spoiler from the new set. Um, obviously, you can cheat him out for two mana with a God Art, um, and that's going to be red, red to play him from your hand. You can only do this on your turn, and you can only um, do it once per game, no matter how many copies of, copies of Welser you have. But he's really cool because he lets you copy any chant that you play. And the chants that we're looking at playing, you know, the Command of Life and Death, uh, the End of Days, uh, Planting Beans potentially are pretty powerful to copy. And I think because we're playing the Blazer, um, we're also going to play another spoiled card, which is Glint of Insight. And for you Yu-Gi-Oh players, that's Mind Crush. For you MTG players, uh, shame on you, you should have played a good game like Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, it, it lets you look at your opponent, it doesn't, sorry, it doesn't let you look at your opponent's hand, you get to name a card, and then you, like, your opponent has to discard it if they have it in their hand. Um, so because we're using Blazer to look at their hand um, frequently, um, we're trying to cast Blazer, we're trying to reanimate Blazer, we're trying to flicker Blazer, uh, we have a lot of ways to look at their hand. So once we know what their hand is, we can use Glint of Insight to name a card and just get that out of the way as well. And I think Glint of Insight is incredibly powerful because if they have multiple copies of a card in their hand, um, then you get to hit all of them, which is nice. Uh, so Glint of Insight is pretty cool, um, especially if you can flick, if you can copy it with the Welser, uh, and you can just, like, you know, name two cards, like, that's pretty good. You just, your opponent's gonna have no hand at all times as soon as possible, and that's pretty cool. Um, so if we're into this Welser idea, right, um, there's a couple, if we want to use this God Art, we can play Freyla, um, which is uh, Freyla Servant of Demon Fire. It's a two mana six six that if you control no resonators when you cast it, um, it gets swiftness. Uh, or uh, sorry, and it has another ability where whenever it declares an attack, you can give another resonator you control plus four plus zero and swiftness until end of turn. But then it dies at the end of the turn. So let's say that we don't have the addition, we don't have the Ataractia, and we're just playing our suboptimal turn one and two. So like our optimal turn one and two is like slam Ataractia, slam Blazer, attack with Blazer, Flicker, you know, that's like super good, but we're not going to draw that card every game. So an option instead would be Freyla, where we go turn one, play, like let's say we don't even have the coin, right? We go turn one, play Tama, and we draw a card. Well, now we go attack with Tama, our opponent's like, well, I don't want him flickering Tama, let me block with something, right? Now we get to go play Freyla, attack with Freyla, flicker Freyla back. So we've dealt six damage because of the, the Freyla attack, and we flickered it, so it's unable to be attacked back by, once again, what we're assuming is a turn one PLE Ailey, because we think that Kirik is going to play four copies of Ground Runner Supremacy, and it's a battle art, so they're just going to have that card turn one every single goddamn game, and I'm, I'm already, I already hate it. Right, but let's assume that that's what happens, right? Turn one Tama, attack into the PLE, they block, we get a Freyla, we attack for six, and then we get to flicker it, so it's safe. On turn three, we can just go like, uh, probably pass, I don't know. So we can like, we could, if we really wanted to, right, we could play the Welser, 
Um, and then attack with Freyla to give the Welser plus four plus zero in swiftness. Now we have an 18-14 that is attacking. And then uh, at the end of the turn, we remove it from the game. And then it comes back. So now we have a Welser sticking around that we cheated out with the Goddard. Um, and that's going to enable us to do some more powerful stuff, right? So when we do, so because we have two chance every turn, we can get some really cool stuff going. Um, obviously, Command of Life and Death is one of the cards that I kind of want to play in this deck, and it can its best use is to get back Rachel, but it can also get back the Freyla. It can get back the one drop so that we have blockers to protect ourselves from uh, Kyrx aggro and stuff like that, or just you know draw more cards. Um, so like copying a Command of Life and Death is not like super broken, but it's still like high value. Um, End of Days is another card that I've been talking about, but like it's super good to um, not only just get back, pay three mana to get back Blazer, but you can pay, like, more than three mana, and you can get back, like, a Blazer plus an Allosaurus, and then you can just, like, use the Blazer enter ability to remove a card from their hand, but then flicker the Allosaurus to keep it alive, and, like, a 14-14 is a pretty big body, and it's very difficult to, um, deal with, especially when, like, you can keep it as a blocker almost every turn. Like, you can attack with it for 1400, flicker it, and then have a 14-14 blocker. Like, that's pretty good. Um, but also just, like, being able to double up all your chances, like, really decent. Um, he also copies all Awakens, so if you, like, for example, Awaken a Planting Beans, then you can um, search your deck for two cards and put them in your hand. So you have a lot of consistency. Because you're playing Tama, Divine Bird, you have a lot of card draw. Um, so I, like, in, in, I'm envisioning this to be a pretty consistent deck, just a little bit slow. I don't know how many copies of Wellstar I would play. Like, And again, the Freyla is like an option. I think that um, if you've ever built a Lumia deck before, like Lumia decks hit 40 cards almost immediately. Like, There's so many cards you want to play because she's so synergistic with a lot of powerful effects. Freyla is one of the cards like, I'm kind of on the fence about. I think no matter what, though, I do want to play Wellstar just as like a reanimate target, right? So I would maybe play two, like not even worry about the God Art, and then use End of Days to Planting Beans to reanimate it, or just cast it for six mana because I'm playing, you know, three or four city of uh, the, the Ataractia, right? And that's still good just with a reanimator type strategy. Um, so Freyla maybe, but Welser absolutely. Um, and again, End of Days, just being able to have powerful tempo plays and get back, you know, blazers and stuff like that. Uh, like specifically Blazer um, is just super super powerful, um, and then also the Alisar or the Welser on top of it, uh, very very good. And then what are we worried about, right? So we have this powerful like has good turn one, has good turn two, has good turn three, but they're all like mid range on curve plays, not very reactive. Um, if we ever can get to that like five six mana area, we're playing multiple proactive cards a turn, we're ripping our opponent's hand apart. Um, like, we, we have a good way to turn the corner, right? Once we get Kyrick down to zero cards, or any deck any deck is just going to fold when they start losing every single card in their hand. Um, but the, 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 the fear, right, is that uh, Kyrick's just going to ass-blast us, or any fast deck, even, like, maybe Ayu. But there's a card that I, I think is really cool, right? This is pretty... This is, I like this a lot. Um, the White Leaf. It's a zero mana um, inheritance to just gain 600 life. Like, why would that card be good, right? Why am I playing this reanimator green-red-black deck? Why would I play a white card? Well, not only is it going to extend our life total against the aggressive decks, um, but I also feel like we're going to have a problem of having too many cards, right? Because we're playing Tama Divine Bird and we're flickering them, like, our optimal turn one is, like, Energize, like, into Verdant, uh, Adaractia City, Verdant Green, play a... Tama, draw a card, attack with Tama, draw a card, end of turn, turn two, play Rachel, attack with Rachel, dr like, search my deck for any card, like, I imagine that my hand size is going to be very, very large, while my mana pool is very, very small, so I'm actually going to have a problem where I have too many cards and not enough mana to cast everything I want to. Well, if I play White Leaf, then I can turn, like, that extra hand size into more life total, like, I wouldn't play four, you know, like, maybe, like, two is what I'm thinking, maybe three if Kyrick is like actually super disgusting but like that's kind of where I'm going with this right but not only is it zero mana gain six but it's a three drop and if it's on the field um you can banish it to gain eight life so in this beautiful scenario where I actually do reanimate out um a Welser and I'm able to copy spells if I ever play a command of life and death it's another target for Command of Life and Death on top of, like, the Rachel. Um, and then it, I can just banish it to gain 8 life. Like, not only do I have an 8 hate to help me, like, block some of the smaller guys that Kyrick wants to throw at me, or just, like, be a blocker to, like, take damage that I would take otherwise, 
I can also just banish it to gain 8 life if they're trying to hit me over the top, you know? Because once I stabilize with the Blazer Legendary Thief, I think that Kyrie's going to have a hard time actually getting damage through with attackers. So they're going to try and go over the top with their burn spells. Um, and at that point, I've got a guy that just says banish it, gain 8 life. I can discard it to gain 6 life. Like That's just a lot of life. And I'm really excited to be doing that kind of stuff. Um, so that's kind of looking for. Uh, none of the cards are on Gotcha Log yet. And I'm really just kind of spitballing. I haven't like put together 40 cards, right? Because I want like... Four Rachel, four Blazer, four Tama, four Divine Bird, two Planting Beans, three Command of Life and Death, three End of Days, maybe a Tuning of Wind and Darkness. And this is kind of cheeky because it's um it's gonna synergize once again with the with the Welser plays. Um, and it might be a little bit too greedy, but like if I have out a green and a black resonator, which would be like a Divine Bird or a Tama in a Blazer, I can play Tuning. I can get a guy back from my graveyard, and then I can untap. I think it's four stones. It costs three mana and it untaps four stones. But with Welser, I untap eight stones. Like, that, that just seems so good. And I can even, like, let one copy of the, the card resolve and then tap that mana and then untap it again. So that's, like, gonna be a way that I can, like, turn the corner um, where my mana pool is tight, but I have a lot of cards. I can just suddenly get a lot of mana as well. And maybe it's super good. Maybe it's mediocre as hell and it's just gonna be a dead card all the time. I don't know, but it's something I'm pretty excited to try out. Um, so that's just kind of where my thoughts are. Just really excited for this deck just to try it out. And again, I'm super terrified of Kyrick more than every more than anything. But like all these cards just kind of coming together look really, really cool. So I'm excited about it. If you guys have any card suggestions to, to throw in here, um, feel free to let me know in the description. Um, I hope you're excited about this new set as I am. Um, it looks pretty fun overall. Nothing seems super problematic except for maybe Feathsing. Um, and like the seal feats thing, like that card could like Kyrick seems terrifying and might be beatable. I hope, um, but seal seems like the seal feats thing seems like it could be a problem. But we're not gonna worry about that until uh, we see what the ban list is because if they like if we still have Lorite, it should be fine. If we don't have Lorite, then oh, oh my god. But yeah, so hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will see you tomorrow.